It's that time of year again. Yes, we are here to talk about the budget. I know it's not yet April and we're in the month of February, but under the new fiscal rules, government is now required to pass a budget before the start of the new fiscal year, which begins on April 1. But why? To ensure better financial management and fiscal administration. So to ensure that happens, there will be some changes. No longer will one hear about the expenditures on one day and wait two or three weeks later to know how the government will finance them. We shall be presenting the estimates of expenditure and the estimates of revenue at the same time. That means on February 19, you will be able to see the big yellow book with the budgetary allocations and the pink book outlining where the money will come from on the same day. So everybody from day one can see how well put together is the budget. It's a far more organized way uh, to present uh, uh, the budget. I think that what is being done now is proper governance. People can project um, their, their, their business from a private sector point of view or from an individual point of view. And also government can let us know ahead of advance, you know, what what are the plans that they have. So it's an excellent move and I commend the, the Minister and the government for this move. Now, since the budget will be tabled earlier, the rituals that usually accompany its tabling will also be completed earlier. But this time, only specific members of government or opposition will contribute to the budget debate. Take a look at the new schedule. The changes to the budget cycle are not the only new things for the parliamentary year. We are going to be seeing a better use of parliamentary time going forward. Unlike the previous years when we celebrate passing 30 odd pieces of legislation, we are going to be looking for many more legislation to be enacted. And to ensure there's sufficient time to debate and pass those legislation, changes are coming to the sectoral debate later in the year so that not every member of parliament will get a chance to speak. It will instead be limited to cabinet ministers who will have limited time. So it is 45 minutes. So ministers who used to speak for an hour and a half, it is not going to happen. We are going to be positioning in parliament new timing devices that will alert people when they have uh, five minutes to go so that they'll be able to adequately wrap up without being unceremoniously terminated by the, by the speaker. And for junior ministers? I do believe that, especially for those who do carry specific um, line items, we'll have to enable them to do presentations. We just, it won't be in the full sectoral debates, but we're going to try to create some space for them again with time limits. Members of Parliament will also be allowed to use technology to enhance their presentations, all in a bid to get everyone more interested in the Parliament. So what about those members of Parliament who are not cabinet or junior ministers who usually contribute to the sectoral debates? We're going to have another debate during the year, which is to enable members of Parliament who wish to speak to make contributions in relation to their constituencies. Each presentation will be limited to 15 minutes. Now that we know about the new schedule for the parliamentary year, let's turn to the analysts for their expectations for the 2015-2016 fiscal year. They believe government has to maintain fiscal discipline. So I think that the path that we're on um, is definitely the path that we need to stay on. We will not depart from our obligations with respect to the economic reform program and the, ex the agreement regarding the extended fund facility with the International Monetary Fund. Like maintaining the 7.5% primary surplus, lowering the country's debt and public sector reform, which includes keeping public sector wages to 9% of the country's gross domestic product. It is going to be very important for us, I think, if we are continuing on this fiscal path, to implement accrual accounting or international public sector accounting standards. The government has committed to it and we're looking forward 
to that implementation going forward. Analysts also indicate that government needs to maintain law and order, focus on tax compliance, improve the country's infrastructure, and grow critical sectors like information and communications technology, manufacturing, tourism, and agriculture. Steps should also continue to reduce bureaucracy. Focus on issues like the procedure to, for exporters, which I understand is really quite onerous and fairly expensive too. Just to break those bottlenecks, I think, uh, is uh, some actions that government could take this year to help with them. By all indications, the 2015-2016 fiscal year will be a remarkable one. Keep informed, be in the know. That way, we will be in a better position to assess government's policies and programs aimed at improving our country, Jamaica. Jamaica.